Hi there, this is Sarah for How We Learn. I wanted to share with you today my five best quiet time tips and two awesome freebies that will help make your quiet time a whole lot easier. If you've been following along on the blog, you know that we are just starting the quiet time journey all over again with my littlest, Nora, who just turned two. Um, we've done quiet time in my home for six years, but we're starting it fresh again with this little one, so I thought I would take you along for our journey about how we're helping her to settle into her daily quiet time, hoping that um, the tips and tricks I share will be helpful to you as you start quiet time in your home. I should begin by saying why we do quiet time each day. So about six years ago was when we started our quiet time and it was because our days were not going so well at home. There was lots of tantrums and meltdowns and I was feeling overwhelmed, um, a house full of little ones and I just didn't have any time to do the stuff that I needed to do. Um, I learned all about the idea of quiet time from um, a few different books I was reading and this idea of like expanding and contracting and setting a rhythm to our days and a huge part of that was the daily quiet time and I thought oh my goodness if I could have quiet time an hour to myself every day I could get so much done I'd be a completely different person so that was my goal was to figure out how I could get a one hour chunk of time during the day where I would um, have that time to myself. Anyways, it was amazing, it happened. I had that time to myself and I also noticed a lot of changes in my kids. They were calmer and happier. Our meltdowns and tantrums reduced significantly. So quiet time doesn't only benefit the parent, it also really benefits the children as well. So the five quiet time tips. The first one I have is to do it the same time every day and be consistent. So whether it's Saturday or whether it's Monday, help your little ones um, develop their internal rhythm and figure out, um, okay, after lunch, I have quiet time. Just like they know what to expect when they first wake up in the morning and they know what to expect as their bedtime routine, help this become part of their daily routine. So it's just an expectation that this is what our family does at this period in time, day in and day out. So be consistent. Second one is start slow and build. So a five minute quiet time right now probably feels like absolutely nothing to you, but just recognize that those five minutes of success that your little one can have right now, next week it'll become 10 minutes. And then the week after that, it'll become 15. And by building nice and slow like that, you're setting your little one up to love quiet time, to feel successful, to feel self-confident and know that quiet time isn't a punishment. It's a special time where she can dive in to learning and exploring all on her own. So second tip, start slow and build. Number three, um, stay close by and be flexible. So often little ones aren't ready right away to go into their bedrooms for a quiet time. That feels too intimidating, maybe too much like punishment. So um, right now what we're doing is we're doing quiet time right in this playroom right here with little Nora. She has her special activity and I stand close by, um, but she knows I'm busy. So I'm doing my work or I'm doing something. So she knows I'm busy. Um, and it's her independent time, but I'm still close by. So it's a little more reassuring for very young children as they're starting quiet time. And the fourth tip which is the importance of having connecting time um, before you're having quiet time. So the idea of connecting time is just before quiet time happens, we might share a story together. We might do a puzzle together. We might do something, just the two of us, nice and quiet, so that she has kind of her buckets filled with my love and attention. She knows that I love her and I care about her and she's feeling good about herself and then okay now you get to have time on your own while mommy goes and does her work so connecting time is huge and the fifth and final thing is to make quiet time special we use quiet bins and these activities only get brought down for quiet time when quiet time is done they get put away so that's what we um that's what we do we make it really special you can put on special music you can put out a blanket we don't do any of that stuff ourselves we just use the one special bin that only comes out at quiet time and that works for our family Okay, now the two cool freebies. First of all, quiet bin labels. So to make those special quiet bins, um, you might think that's gonna be a lot of work, filling quiet bins every day, but these labels make it so much easier. So this is a free printable that I'll link to below from my blog, and it tells you exactly what to put in each quiet bin. So there's eight different labels, buy eight different little boxes from the dollar store, pop on your labels, and then you'll know inside each bin what you put. So you'll have one that says like the crafting bin, and inside the crafting bin you'll put, um, maybe that'll be your cutting bin for the week. So you take little strips of paper and scissors and you can chop it up so your little one can do cutting. 
Um, and then you have a bin that's imaginative play. So now you think, okay, one imaginative play idea. Oh, I know. I can put popsicle sticks in that one with little people. And that can be her imaginative play quiet bin. Um, there's one about loose parts. So you're practicing and strengthening hand dexterity um, and creative thinking with loose parts. So maybe you pop a bunch of um, like cotton balls in there and um, little, little tweezers so she can pick up the cotton balls and pop them in maybe an egg carton, something like that. So you can just get creative and think about the specific topic and that'll help you figure out what exactly you need to fill your quiet bin with. Um, the other labels are Play-Doh, Fine Motor, Building, Numbers, and then the letters, Quiet Bin. So be sure to grab that freebie from the blog. I know it seems super basic and simple, but I tell you, it's a game changer. It makes filling Quiet Bins so easy. And it also holds you accountable to make sure that you have Quiet Bins available for your little one to make that time nice and special. The second freebie on the blog are these awesome Quiet Time play mats. So these ones, you print them off from the computer. You can arrange these all on a big piece of cardboard and make like your own little dollhouse for your little one to play and explore with that quiet time. And again, keep it special by pulling these back away after. You could even add these to your Play-Doh bin, cover these in contact paper and have them make little Play-Doh people sitting on the couch and doing different things and different activities. Um, there's so many ways to play and explore and learn with these printables. So there's the house theme. There's five little bins that have to do with the house. And then there's um, five little scenes, outdoor scenes. So there's a beach and the outside of the house and an airport and a lot of really fun things that you and your little one can play and explore together. I hope these quiet time tips are helpful to you and to your little one. Please let me know if you have any questions at all. I'll talk to you again next week. Thanks. Bye.